All right, good morning. morning. Welcome to this time of worship on the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, Welcome to all the guests and visitors that we have with us here in the sanctuary this morning. Welcome to all who also are joining us online. We are delighted to have you with us, whether here or uh, virtually. Uh, For those who are joining us online, we've We've tried to make a couple slide adjustments this week. We're we're, uh, working to make sure we've captured the screen so that as we here together in the sanctuary are following along and singing the words of the the praise songs, uh, we invite you to to do the same and you won't have to hopefully that way kind of go back and forth between a bulletin in your hand and and, uh, what you're seeing on the screen. And then also feel free to to post a word of hello, whether you want to just indicate you're with us right now. Um, But when we come to the sharing of the peace later in the service, we invite you to share a word of peace also. Cassidy is here uh, to kind of monitor that. And if she's able, she'll respond uh, in due course. But it's wonderful to have you with us. And it's wonderful. It's a blessing, of course, to gather here with all who are able to be with us in, in this worship space as well. One word of of note before we begin our service, and again, as usual, we'll have our announcement time later, but um, as I mentioned last week, Council has uh, determined that for the time being with the the, the Delta variant and the virus, uh, we're going to continue with just one worship service, and uh, we're masking uh, it, we're, we're recommending that strongly. But as we continue with one worship service, that means, of course, that we're, we're blending together both a traditional service uh, that the, the church has had and a more contemporary service. And so what we've decided to do for the next couple of weeks is kind of shade one way or the other. So this, this Sunday, today, you'll notice that our songs are a little bit more contemporary in nature. I'm not wearing the alb and stole. I'm just wearing the, the little less formal clerical collar, although if you come from a non-liturgical tradition, this probably still looks pretty formal, but, <laughs> but a little less formal than I might otherwise look up here. And, uh, but next week then, we'll go back to a more traditional uh, 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 tone of the service, if you like, more traditional songs. And we'll try that for this week and next week. The following week, we might go back to more of a blended service. We'll see. But we want to we wanna recognize uh, both styles of worship here, and, and uh, we'll try this for a little bit. All right, that's uh, enough to, to get us started this morning. And we're, again, delighted to be together. I uh, wish each and every one of us a blessed worship celebration. Let's prepare our hearts and minds to worship then as we hear our prelude.
I invite you to stand as you are able and join me as we together confess our sin and hear God's word of forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Our gathering song is, Here I Am to Worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, your word feeds your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth, that renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, and I'm going to chat for just a few minutes with the kids who are at home here. All right. I know we've got some there who are watching, so good morning, children that are at home with us, and I uh, hope you're having a good week. I know some of you started school this week, and I hope that's going well. I'm wearing something that you probably wear 
sometimes. If you ever ride your bike around town, you wear one of these. This is a bike helmet, and it's important that you wear one of these because if you were to take a tumble on that bike, you know, we want to make sure that this is protected up here. And maybe you can think of some other things that uh, we wear to protect us. Maybe some of you like to boogie board or to surf, and you'll wear a, a wetsuit, uh, especially as we get into colder months here, to protect against the cold of the water. Or if you play a sport, like maybe sometimes some of you play football, you wear a helmet and shoulder pads and stuff like that. So this, wearing stuff like this to protect us is something we've done for a long time. A couple thousand years ago, during, in, in Roman times, uh, or even less than that, about half that time in medieval times in Europe, uh, soldiers would wear a helmet to protect themselves when they were fighting or a, a shield uh, to protect themselves in battle. They would wear armor, a breastplate. And, uh, but we, so we think about, we know these, we know to wear things to protect our bodies in various situations. But I want to read something for you because we don't often think about being protected in our spirits and being protected by God's word. But in one of the passages that, that um, we can read today, we're not reading it here in, in church, but but it's one of the passages that uh, the church over time has said, you know, this would be a good one to read. From the book of Ephesians, the author talks about this being in kind of like a, a spiritual battle sometimes. And, and, you know, we don't often think about that, but sometimes we do experience in life, and you will maybe as you grow up, that there are hard times in this world that, that are more than just what we encounter like in one-on-one -on -one situations. We, you know, we encounter things where whole groups of people get hurt by whole other groups of people doing bad things. We encounter whole systems, processes that are in place that just that can hurt people. And it can feel sometimes like it's just too much. It's, 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 uh, it's beyond us. So I want to read these words to you. It says, for our struggle is not against, it's not always certainly against, flesh and blood, against physical enemies the enemies of flesh and blood, but against rulers, authorities, spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. And so the author of these words encourages his hearers to say, he says, look, fasten a belt of truth around your waist. As for what you put on your feet, put on what will ever, whatever will help you proclaim the gospel of peace. Take up the shield of faith with you. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And so the idea here is when we encounter very hard and difficult things in this world, and you might even in school feel sometimes just overwhelmed, you're not helpless, and we, I want you to know that, 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 that uh, you are protected as a child of God. You are protected by the Word of God. You are protected by your faith. And I want you to be able to claim that in, in hard times in, in life. I want you to know that you can always turn to God in prayer and ask for God to strengthen you as you go through these difficult things. Um, sometimes life does feel like a struggle this way, but we're not alone in that struggle. The Spirit of God that you received in your baptism strengthens you, and you can always turn to that Spirit. So let's pray, shall we? Gracious God, I do thank you that you strengthen us for very challenging times, sometimes like the times even now that we're facing. I pray for these children, Lord, that whatever comes in their lives, you surround them with your spirit. You give them strength from within to face whatever difficulties may come, knowing, Lord, your truth, that they may stand for those who are suffering injustice, that they, they may speak your peace into this world that they know your word, and it is a firm foundation for them. We pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today, and I'll invite Cassidy to come on up for our Old Testament reading.
Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt. Out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us all along the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove us, drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. Here ends the reading. Thanks be, Thanks be to God. Thank you, Cassidy. Please rise as you are able for our gospel acclamation. This is the Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. O Lord. Jesus said, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Lord Christ. Please be seated. And grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's lessons concern faith, what it is and what it is placed in. What connection do you think there should be between faith and the circumstances of our lives? In other words, how much does faith mean placing trust in a better life, a better world? We've seen some hard news this past week. The collapse of the government in Afghanistan and the return to power of the Taliban after two decades of U.S. involvement in that country. A devastating earthquake in Haiti, piled on by a tropical storm, which took thousands of lives and left tens of thousands homeless. Wildfires growing to the north of us, which the smoke from which is traveling hundreds of miles across the states. COVID numbers surging again to the point that hospitals once more report being overwhelmed. 
To the extent that faith amounts to placing our trust in a better world, these are the kinds of stories that shake and challenge it. Maybe faith is a superstitious futility, a spectacularly unjustified effort to keep the chin up in a relentlessly hard world. Maybe we should just give up on faith. Or maybe we should hold on to faith, but give up on the world. Maybe faith's object should be entirely otherworldly. Maybe because of this world's persistent cycles of struggle, tragedy, and loss, we should put our trust in a supernatural existence and shake this earth's dust off our feet in a testimony against it. Well, plenty have taken both of these roads, as I don't have to tell you. But as we conclude our five-week journey through John chapter 6, we encounter a third way, a third option. We encounter the possibility of a faith that holds out hope for this world, that seeks God's saving, redeeming action here and now, yet faces squarely into this world's calamities and brokenness, that sees redemption to entail the ongoing hard and messy work of mercy and compassion, repentance and forgiveness, that is more about spiritual fortitude than fleshly security, that sees even in the best political structures, the most just human societies, even in the healthiest personal situations, a need for yet newer creation. This would be a good time to share a bit more about the context of this chapter that we've now spent a little more than a month in, John chapter 6. In John's Gospel, the feeding of the 5,000, which again begins the chapter, and then Jesus' subsequent teaching about being the bread of life, which we heard again today. This all takes place on the eve of the Passover. Chapter 6, verse 4 makes that explicit. And that's an important detail because it sets whatever Jesus says and does in the ensuing verses in comparison to what Moses said and did as we have discussed. It places the bread that Jesus offers in relation to the manna that Moses offered. It places Jesus' life and ministry in relation to the Mosaic law. The Passover was a central part of Israel's ritual cycle, the law's ritual cycle. It was that festival which most celebrated God's rescue and provision, God's deliverance specifically from slavery in Egypt, and provision then in the wilderness as the Israelites wandered out of Egypt. In this regard, it was an annual reminder to the nation of Israel that they had one Lord and Savior, God Almighty, and they were not to be subject to any other master, even any other earthly master, any other human authority. God had elected them alone, and their allegiance, therefore, was to Him alone. If they were found subject to another nation, they were not to make peace with that nation and simply take on their gods, but rather they were to seek the Lord's rescue as their ancestors did in Egypt. No dual citizenship divided between God's kingdom and the kingdoms of the idols. Choose this day whom you will serve. Cassidy just read for us out of the book of Joshua. Joshua commanded the Israelites as they're going into Canaan. And they responded, Far be it from us that we should forsake Yahweh, the Lord in our English translations, to serve other gods. For it is Yahweh, our God, who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You see? At the heart of Israel's experience of salvation, then, is an element of ethnic identity. This people is only this people as God's chosen, as those whom God rescued from other peoples, gave a set of political, social, and personal obligations to, and who in turn obeyed Him only. Whatever else God's salvation might ultimately, eventually entail for the world, many believe that in keeping with the Mosaic tradition, 
It must entail the political, social, and personal redemption of God's elect people of Israel. Life comes to the world as it comes to Israel, and life comes to Israel as it feeds on God's law. A second contextual detail from John 6 now becomes quite relevant. For the third time, we have just read that when Jesus teaches about being the bread of life, that he is the one who gives life to the world. He does so in Capernaum. John chapter 6, verse 17 says that after feeding the crowd, the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus got into a boat and went to Capernaum. Just a few verses later, verse 24, we read a few weeks ago, this repeats that when some in the crowd came looking for Jesus, they got into boats and went to Capernaum. And we just read in verse 59 that Jesus said these things while he was teaching at Capernaum. <laughs> Either the editor of John has gotten really sloppy and just keeps repeating himself, or he intends to make a point. It's pretty clear that it's the latter. Capernaum is a northern town on the edge of the Sea of Galilee. It's an outer town, a place of ethnic diversity, a place where Jews intermingle with Gentiles. Religiously speaking, it is not a town that is central to Israel's religious identity. In the words of the theologians David Bowie and Freddie Mercury, in their classic 1981 song, Under Pressure, it's a town where we might encounter people on the edge of the light, that kind of thing. So, when on the eve of Passover, Jesus teaches in Capernaum that he is the bread of life, not like the manna your ancestors ate, the manna Moses gave, more nourishing and life-producing than the law itself he stretches the people's understanding of God's liberation to include a wider range of people and a wider range of circumstances than Israel's political, social, and personal vindication. He indicates that Passover grace is about much more than establishing this people's borders and security through ritual fidelity to the law. Jesus shifts the experience of God's liberation away from the flesh, from rites of inclusion, to the movement of the spirit, to the nourishment and fortitude that come from his sacrificial love. It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. In Jesus, God's children making work his election involves making alive within all who hear Christ's call an empathetic resolve, a compassionate determination to confront the world's many injustices and hardships, its exclusions. Answer these with, with mercy and understanding, grace, charity. God's salvation is an active process of breathing new life, not just into a collection of individuals over against another collection of individuals, but into an entire world lurching in the throes of mortality. It's a continuing work of fortifying life against the grave in the many, many forms that we encounter the grave. Faith means recognizing that in Christ Jesus, we are made heirs of God's promise that by the creator of this world, we are caught up in the struggle for new creation. As frail and mortal creatures, we are given a new wind or breath of life, a new spirit, not simply to await transport to another world, but to confront all of the death-inclined forces of this world, the hatred and oppression of war, the tragedy of loss, the callous disregard for shared resources, the dread of disease, knowing that we may not see a final victory over all these things in our lifetime, being children of promise, promise, means placing our trust in a power of transformation that is greater than us, that is at work within us and beyond us. Faith in Christ means placing trust not in a better world, but in God's persistent work of new creation each moment. 
seeding in us and in this world a love that will make all things new and entrusting ourselves to that love in the midst of our own sinfulness and this world's brokenness. Amen. Our song of the day is breathe. I invite you to stand as you are able. And made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of courage, bless all leaders of your church, especially those in hostile and unsafe regions of the world. Strengthen their faith in your loving word and empower them to proclaim the gospel of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, bless fields and orchards, protect the land from drought and bring life-giving rain to support growth. Instruct your people in wise treatment of the world you have provided for all your creatures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, Bless all who seek justice between nations and peoples. 
give guidance to bridge builders, heal divisions, and inspire cooperation in times of crisis, disaster, and war. Temper the consequences of political misjudgment and arrogance. Soften the effects of violent storms in a changing environment. Shelter the innocent. Protect those under threat. Provide haven for refugees. Bring hope to those who see no light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, bless all who are in any need. Accompany all who are lonely and feeling abandoned and remind them of your abiding presence. Accompany all who are persecuted and exploited and open us to their cries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of change, bless our transitions. Guide all who are embarking on new stages in life, such as a new job, new school, or new community. Give patience and wisdom to parents, educators, and administrators working to find the best way to teach our children during this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please greet one another with a sign of Christ's peace, and we invite those at home to do the same with a word of peace. <laughs> Up and down on it. Hi, God. Peace be with you. You too, John. Good to see you this morning. Yeah, Ed, how are you? Peace be with you guys this morning. Uh, absolutely. Peace be with you. Peace, you guys. Great to have you here today. Joan, peace be with you. Thanks, Cassidy. Peace be with you, too. Hi, peace be with you. Thanks, Jim. Peace be with you. <laughs> Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to take the prepackaged bread. If you didn't receive one, there are still some, I believe, available, right, uh, on the way in. Thank you, Cassidy, for tracking those down. Please go ahead and open that. And take out the bread and hold it up. This is the body of Christ given for you. And the same with the cup. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. I have just a couple of announcements to lift up, and certainly I'll be eager to hear if any others have anything to share. I did want to um, uh, just uh, uh, signal a couple of calendar items, which uh, might be coming up on the screen if they're, they're on the back of that, the, the big uh, sheet that you got. But just to uh, make everyone aware, um, on, and I'm not sure that this one actually is yet on the calendar there, but on the 5th of September, just two weeks from now, we're going to integrate into our service here uh, uh, some, uh, an element uh, of the Liturgy of Healing. Uh, one of the things that uh, we've all experienced this past year during this time of COVID, whether we've been impacted directly by the disease ourselves or not, we've all encountered some form of loss from this. Friends, family, acquaintances that we know have suffered in some way. Uh, we're all mourning certainly the uh, loss of regular interaction with friends, regular opportunity to strengthen our relationships with people we love. And so um, uh, Pastor Brown has been gracious. Uh, Pastor Ellen as well are gonna help and participate in that service on September 5th. So uh, that's of course Labor Day weekend and we know some folks travel, but if you're able to be with us, uh, we certainly welcome you. We're putting that service together now. And then the following Sunday, the 12th is a big day here at, at Hope. It's our rally Sunday. So it's a day when we invite families with kids to come back. We're gonna, it's our Sunday school kickoff. That's a big part of the day. We're gonna have a potluck celebration. But part of the service element there is that we're gonna assemble Lutheran World Relief Kits, uh, part of our, our calling as uh, followers of Christ and something that the ELCA that we participate in is preparing these kits uh, that get sent out to folks in need uh, all across the, the globe, in fact. Um, and then after we do all that here, uh, as, as further opportunity to participate in the wider body of Christ uh, here, um, our newly elected bishop for the Southwest California Synod, Bishop, uh, ben, Brenda, Bishop Brenda Boss will be installed on, at four o'clock that afternoon on the 12th. And um, we had hoped to put together a, an organized kind of a watch party with the Delta variant. We're inclining now rather simply to share the details where you can watch via Zoom on your own. Uh, but don't hesitate if you'd like to do that, to, to contact us and we'll get uh, information out to you. Cassidy has been wonderful in, in spearheading that and representing hope in that process so but we're delighted to be uh, able to be installing a new bishop here in a couple of weeks and then last week i neglected to, to say happy birthday and happy anniversary to alden and and martha but happy anniversary alden what number were the anniversary again 54 54 congratulations yes indeed that's worthy of a prize. thank you and she may be watching online, but happy birthday, Natani Light. It's her birthday uh, this coming week, as I understand. So are there other announcements to lift up for the, the good of the community? Linda, yeah. I just want to add on the potluck, on the round yes. day, we are providing the main dish. We're doing full pork sandwiches. So when you're thinking of what you want to bring, bring a side dish or dessert that you go with. Thank you, Linda. For those who are at home, if you weren't able to hear that, um, the, the potluck, if you're able to join us on Rally Sunday the 12th, we're providing the main dish. So if you're thinking of what other items to bring, think side items, I guess, right? In addition to the, the pulled pork is what we're gonna have for the main dish. Darla, did you have something? Yes, yeah. thank you. Um, we are now doing coffee hour again. So I'm gonna use these white ports and we'll have September and October. I'll put the dates in there for you. If you'd like to volunteer to bring something for a coffee hour or just come and make coffee, that'd be great. And I'll have these in the kitchen that you can sign up on. Thank you, Darla. Coffee hour is a vital part of our life together <laughs> as, 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 Christ, as Lutherans in particular, right? We, we do love our coffee. Thank you so much, Darla, for all you do to help organize that. Are there any other announcements to lift up? All right. Well, seeing none, then I invite you to stand and receive the benediction. The blessing of God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our sending song is Step by Step.
in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.